Even if it isn't a destination wedding for the couple and the other vendors, it often is for us as we're called upon to travel throughout the United States and abroad as well as we have a, a unique product and service that um, is called for for high-end weddings. There's also a difference between where your client and their guests come to your location, which is a destination wedding for them, to where you travel with them to a different location. Event Savvy comes with experience, and experience is, is won through arranging weddings. A very good way of breaking in is to work as an assistant for an established destination wedding planner. It's definitely a good idea to start off by really working out a an example of a destination wedding. To choose a destination that you would like to plan a wedding for and just start pulling things together. And through discussing a destination wedding with your client, you will get very valuable feedback from them about what your model, what your suggestion involves that is of value to them and where you need to polish it up a bit. It can take a lot more resources, um, three times as much time to come up with a proposal, that you're wrapping up your administration, your office time um, in looking into details that you wouldn't have to look into for a local event, and to collaborate with people you already know is a great deal easier than um, trying to work things out on your own. Select several venues that work for you, that you feel a personal involvement with, that matter to you, that reflect the kind of character of your business, and become an expert in those. It's always good to start off by giving them some business. So it is a symbiotic relationship where you are looking to buy in to a real business partnership. Do make sure you visit locations that you might like to use for some of your events and take it as an excuse to, to go to wild exotic places. Many events can actually be worked out well in advance of your having a client. Whereas you might get away with six months if it's a local wedding, I would say definitely want to allow for a year for a destination wedding. The cost structure of a destination wedding is different from a local wedding. You need to sell to what can be delivered and what is realistic. So if it's a simple beach wedding, you find a simple beach. If it's a sophisticated soundstage that's needed for a big band that's being flown in, then you need to have something um, that's appropriate to that. Going out and doing a face-to-face, -face, making sure you meet everyone, you see the rooms, you see the space, you press the flesh and you get a feel for the character of the place is very, very valuable. They will know what hasn't worked, what has worked, um, and you can adapt a successful previous wedding to your client's needs far more easily than ignoring history and pretending that nothing has ever happened there before. Things book up very quickly in luxury markets where there are fewer players. I would start off with a real production schedule for the event early on and make sure you revise it. It is supposed to represent the up-to-date version of what is supposed to be happening. There are unanticipated expenses that there's a good chance you're going to have to deal with. Making sure your credit card balance is paid off before you go out there to, to wage war for your client. On the East Coast, there are so many wonderful historic estates houses, beaches, and parks that, that are, are, are really wonderful for destination events. And um, so you might plan an itinerary that would take in places like Bar Harbor in Maine, Woodstock, Vermont, the Berkshire Mountains in Massachusetts, then down to Newport, Rhode Island, 
the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, Asheville, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, then Savannah, Georgia, Miami, South Beach, the Keys, Key West in particular, and um, obviously New Orleans is, is a fabulous historic place as well.